Hey guys, this is Carolina Varsity. We're in our 2015 season. We are all the way into round two of the playoffs. And uh, we've got a big 3A game here of number seven. This is a rematch. And the last time these two teams played, Statesville sent South Point packing home. They went on to the fourth round. So we got number seven Statesville going over to play number two South Point. I'm Dale Ross. I'm Anthony Parkins. And I'm Jeff Miller. Anthony, what do we got here? You the South Point guy. <laughs> Uh, well, South Point has a 10 2 record, mm -hmm. Statesville 9 3. It's a pretty, pretty close record wise. Yep. South Point is, uh, both teams actually are, are averaging less than a half a point difference on offense uh, to the left foot for, right. for the year. Uh, the difference is South Point is giving up 13 points less per game uh, to their opposition compared mm -hmm. to Statesville. Uh, South Point's giving up uh, an average of 11 points per game. State's Point's giving up an average of 24 points per game. Uh, combined winning per numbers for uh, South Point's opposition is uh, the teams that they have played have 74 wins, 65 losses. Mm -hmm. uh, State's Point has, uh, their opposition has 65 wins, 74 losses. Uh, but, uh, South Point played during the course of the season seven teams that made it to the playoffs. Uh, states will play six teams that made it to the playoffs. Both teams were battle tested. Uh, the one statistic that I have that I, that, that I, I just know that that to me is a game changer, uh, and, and that's turnovers. Turnovers are always turnovers and penalties are always big in football games, oh, especially yes. in playoffs. Yep. South Point has turned the opposition over thirty times this year, and they've turned the ball over only seven times, uh, and. To me, I think if uh, the offenses are pretty even, I mm -hmm. think the diff I think the differences in these two teams is, is right now looks like it's going to be defense. Right. Uh, and South Point, to me, had a clear edge uh, in turnovers, uh, turnover ratio, uh, uh, and, and also in what they're allowing, what they're giving up to the to the opposition. Mm -hmm. The Red Raiders, they've got. Uh, Good offensive team, uh, they can do numbers, uh, and the the wishbone offense, or the, I'm sorry, the red bone red offense bone, that, uh -huh. they, that they run, uh, that makes it difficult for defenses. And I've seen this year after year. Most of the time, if you stop, if you stop the fullback up the middle, then which this year is is a uh, Ryan Etherton, then the quarterback's going to run up and down the field around the end. Mm -hmm. You stop the quarterback and run around the ends, then Riley Evans is going to have a field day running up the middle. So, and South Point does not pass much. They only average about 60 yards a game passing. So, passing's not a threat. But as soon as you think, well, they're not going to pass, he only completes about three a game. But whenever he does complete, <laughs> as seldom as they pass, they're usually pretty successful. And they usually right. go for big yards, sometimes touchdowns. So, Statesville's got a lot to think about, but they are capable. And some of the teams that some of the players rather on this team were on the team years ago, uh, three years ago, whenever they whenever they ended South Point season. So uh, there'll be uh, there'll be a little bit of familiarity there between the teams, although they've not played in nearly three years. But still, yet uh, I, I'm giving the Raiders about a 17 point advantage in this one. Before we get to you, Travis Ramser is one of those players. Right. So go ahead. All right. Uh, now you were talk you were discussing about uh, you know the opponents that each team has played, and you know three opponents that come to mind on Statesville schedule is Mooresville, Lake Norman, and West Forsyth, all really good teams, and uh, you know all beat Statesville and Statesville uh, to finish the season off beat conference front one, front runner South Iredell in the season finale, and. Uh, so that just shows, you know, Statesville is capable of playing with uh, with the big boys, and uh, and I do think uh, South Point will win this game because that triple option. I mean, it's it's a hellacious offense to stop, and uh, you know, you pick your poison. You know, the quarterback, the fullback, the pitch man, or you know, let South Point pop you with a pass here and there. Um, I don't know if any of Statesville's opponents run any kind of wing offenses, but uh, if they don't, then they're going to be in for a surprise. And 
you know, Mickey Lineberger, I'm sure he's got this game from three years ago in the back of his mind. He's usually good with revenge games. I mean, got revenge on Force U this year after um, losing the only conference game to him last year. Got revenge on Concord last year in the second round of the playoffs. So the revenge factor is another thing to consider. Does, does baseball still run straight off in? I, I would think yes. they do. Yes. Well, that's what I thought. And I'll tell you this, the South Point, if they've got a weakness on defense, it is passing. And what you've got with, uh, so uh, first of all, the report calls this a 34-23 South Point win. Um, so uh, what what you've got with Travis from Sur is a dual threat uh, quarterback. Uh, he can hurt you with his arm and he can kill you with his feet. Uh, so you get a guy that can get you in, in both phases of the game. And that's, that can be uh, someone that's as, as athletic as him uh, and as able as he is. That can be a very, very difficult guy to defend. I'm going to call him a uh, – uh, oh, I'm drawing a, a, a blank here on the kid from uh, Lake Norman last year. Ladowski? Yeah, I'm not going to call him a Ladowski, but he's uh, of similar nature as far as uh, being able to hurt you both ways. Uh, t the big thing I think for Statesville is the win over uh, South Iredale. That was a huge win. Uh, South Iredale was a very, very good ball team that can throw up lots of points. And that was a high scoring game, but uh, that was kind of a propelling game, I think, that kind of uh, helped mark a turnaround in the uh, Statesville season. Uh, they had a number of losses early. Now, another thing to remember is they play in a 4A, 3A conference. So uh, the loss to Mooresville, for example, is a, a 4A squad. So uh, they kind of did well in the 3A part of their uh, uh, conference, and uh, they made it a ball game. And I could see just their uh, athleticism making this a ball game. 34-23 is a ball game. That's two scores. So. Uh, I think it could be a, a great uh, ball game over Belmont. Uh, you know, Dale, I said in the in the previous video we did concerning Freedom and uh, Kings Mountain, right? That that was a good chance for a lower seed. That uh, I think he is still think it is mm -hmm. for a lower seed to upset a higher seed, right? And I think that this game also is identical to that as far as how the outcome sure. could be. This this is a this this could be a trap game. For the number two, two seed as well as it could uh, right. a trap weekend for the number one seed and the number two seed if they don't play their best ball. And, right. and of course, you know, whenever we sit here and talk about these things, we talk about, I assume everybody else does, but we talk about and make the assumption that both teams are going to play their best game. Right. So so I would, I would still have to give South Point, a, I'm saying a 17 point edge, which mm -hmm. is different than what a computer said. Not much. But uh, I, I, would, I would still. This point, given the fact that you know, and if both teams bring bring it all and, and play their best mm -hmm. game and play up their capabilities, I, I would still see South Point as 14, 17 point favorite. Well, it's a Friday night. It's the second round of the playoffs. How can you not play your best game that you played so far this season? Other than you might try to play a better game next week, but to get the next week, you got to get this by week. this week exactly. So I think it's going to be a, a fantastic ball game to go watch and Belmont to be rocking. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great night.